And it's another Wednesday night. It's Flip the Script Radio, and you know how we do every Wednesday night, 8 to 11 p.m. We got T Money MTV's T Money in the That's right there, baby boy. Yeah, That's yeah, how we do it. We right here, Flip the Script Radio. Let's get down. Come on, everyone, get down. Come on. <laughs> Let's go. That's you already know what it is. That's how you're supposed to come in, Matt. That's hey, right. Man. You got the Tito's vodka in the building. Let's go. Let's make it happen. That's That's right. Shout out to Lord Sear. He's a professional. Tito. That's right, baby. Let's get that. Oh. What's up, yo? What's up, all you listeners, man? we about to do it right now. Flip the Script Radio, real heavy. And we got a lot of beverages on the table. You yes. Know, so you know when beverages flow, things flow, Jameson. We got like beverages, lame. we well, got you know, food. We got the usual here at the kitchen room, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, the kitchen room is real serious. My man Deep Money in the back, he, he's, he's taking part taking in the chicken. Yeah. That's how we doing it. You know what I mean? Fuck it up. You know, we all right tonight. You know what I mean? Bronx in the building. Right. Peace out to the Bronx. Hey, so T-Money, what you got going on? I'm noticing a lot of posts with that T-450. Yeah, I, I, you know, I run a, a, a company called um, T450 Style and Launch. We do brand marketing. We do marketing for big businesses, artist management. Um, we do a lot of things, man. We do promotions as well. So be honest. Do we have a shot? Can we do Can we do something? Can we get rich? That's what I want to know. Oh, <laughs> ask him at 11. Yeah, we, can, we can talk about your brand. We, can, make it, we can flip it. Do we got we to gotta figure uh, out what it is. Hold on. See, I, I was planning to ask that after that bottle of Tito's is, is gone. Oh, he's right? smart. See, he's smart. <laughs> after he ate a couple yeah. more plates. He, he know when to ask. You, you know? know what I mean? You but just, yeah, we... Um, we doing a lot of good things, man. I got my clients are real diverse, man. I got I got music clients. I got I got women who actually do porn. No, oh no, we're not we're not, we're not there yet. Uh, soft porn. Let me know when you're ready. Let me know when you're ready. Soft porn. We got a midget that hangs out here. It'd be do, perfect. Oh wow, man. So he do does he do tossing? He does whatever you oh, whatever you do whatever you want. Midget bowling, all that good stuff. Yeah. Midget tossing was the was the thing back yeah, then. They yeah. throw you against the wall and it's Word all up. good. Yeah, but my clients are real diverse, man. I got a lot of stuff going on, man. I got stuff in the I got millennials. I got you know uh, women who do makeup. I got I got all kind of stuff. Word. You know what I mean? So we'll, we'll, get, do, in, we'll do, get into that. Do they do makeup for porn stars? Um, nah, <laughs> not yet. But we're, 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 we're discussing that. You well, know, an, anal bleaching is the latest lot, craze. It's a lot of money in that. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> if you got a dark shrink there, you know where to go. Do they really need makeup? Let's think about this. For oh, yeah, course. right. No. It depends. Yeah, who's really looking at their face? That's right. My point. So I like well, maybe on the you know. Well, you know, you got to lighten up the, the Cheerios. The money you know shot. Come on, the money shot. Wasn't MTV looking to bring your MTV raps back? Well, they are. They're bringing. They they are bringing it back. They actually have overseas. That's scary. You got anything to do with that? No, because it's a whole new generation of yeah, of, um, yeah. of young people. Yeah. Hundred, the, hundred, the, millennium, hundred, hundred. the millennials again. Yeah, but it's cool. You know, they, they and they're reinventing the brand overseas right now. Um, doing it, your own TV raps. But you know, is it doing numbers? But you know overseas? what though? We talk about it all the time, man. Not to shit on the young people. There's a lot of young people that are into some real hip hop shit. Oh no it's question. Some, and we we've had people come through like. Last week from Australia, Nelson Dialect, shout out to him. Dude's like 26 years old making like straight, authentic hip hop And that's good, music. man. I'm when happy he, about that. It ain't, yeah, it ain't like dead. He stays <laughs> in the Bronx, and, and when he rhymes, he sounds like he's from the Bronx. And right. You don't hear the Australian accent. Oh, that's dope. That's dope. say he's in the Boogie Down Under. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's a porn. Talking about, that's a great porn title. Hip hop for life, man. Now, keep up. in mind, hip hop is the number one music form in the world right now. Yeah. He's surpassing rock and roll, finally. But, yeah. And, um, you know, I'm happy that it's... In the hands of the millennials, man, and they're doing their thing. I mean, I'm not crazy about the mumble rap because I was. I'm really. You not, can say you hate it. It's all right. No, I don't. I don't. I don't. I mean, I, I, I gotta applaud your effort, but I'm like a lot of times I'm not really feeling the mumble rap because when then when I listen to people like Redman, Big Daddy Kane, I listen to, you know, I was listening to Talib Kweli this morning. I was listening to um, Q-Tip. I was listening to. I mean, these cats, man. They, Plus, there's a whole host of new artists that are making shit. At this moment. So you tell me right now, you know, you you line up, and you guys are radio professionals. You can line up. Oh, wait a second. Five let's let's not get carried away now. Five industry <laughs> uh, mumble rappers that you consider mumble rappers. And then line I can't up, name five you can't industry name? mumble rappers. That's a bad thing, but you can name five 90s rappers who are still to this day hot. Absolutely. But, you know but the mean? other side of that is we could also name... 500 current cats that yes. cats half our age don't know about and should know because they should be spearheading this there movement, you go. not this us. Point, but this is right. true, but they, but they might not know. They might not care. Yes, 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 y'all. To the beat, y'all. Oh, Come. yeah, we back here with T-Money. That's right, y'all. What the deal, baby? You, you know, know how we chillin'. do. Yo, T-Money chilling, man. 
Yeah, man. What, what this, you think about the vibe here tonight? The vibe is, yo, let's, let me tell you something, all right? The atmosphere is cool. For those cool? who have never been up here. And never will be. You know, at the Fender Script Radio Hotel. This is where like a hotel. Okay. <laughs> it's, not, it's not the kitchen. We're going to redub this, the hotel. The hotel. You know what I mean? Because we lounge and we lounge and spell, black. Spell the hole in hotel. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. KRS-One released the second solo album, KRS-One, October 10th, 1995. Knowledge reigns supreme, KRS-One, my dude. Classic. We, I told him uh, in the summertime, I saw him, I said, we are forever linked because... My birthday party was the party that he threw PM doing off the stage. Oh shit! That was my birthday Perfect. party. Shut up! You know, talk about hip hop history. Real, real oh, talk, no. man. That's my dude right there. He yeah. killed PM Dawn. I can't even <laughs> hear Spandau Ballet without thinking of that. Yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you the story about that later. It's crazy. You know the stage <laughs> is do high. Don't do it. So either. tell us a little bit more about that T450, man. Well, we, we the 80s and 90s joint. What, what I do is, you know, most. Most marketing firms only want to deal with clients that already got stuff popping, you know. I'm, I'm really into, like, you know, finding, like, the, the, the diamond in the rough, you know, and, and, and putting and putting the right things together. Because sometimes, you know, artists or um, companies or, you know, people who got a, a talent, only they just need somebody to organize their shit, man, like to put whatever they're dealing with together, you know, have, in the right be, way. Have it be seen, too. Right, like, right. If people don't mean? know it exists, then what's right. good? Right. The next thing you know, that they, there's somebody or they blow up, you know what I'm saying? Right. Like, and I'm, I'm, I'm into that, you know. Like so I, is, is this for any young entrepreneur or is this for strictly fashion? Well, no, not, strict, not fashion at all, man. I, I Like I said, I have one of, I, I manage one of the, the biggest, um, you know, millennial um artists on on youtube right now the, 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 there's two guys that they do a youtube show called zeus it's okay. a reactionary site it's like ridiculous man it's oh like, i think i know those yeah yeah, yeah, yeah i've yeah, seen that yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Zeke, zeke and b lou they're, yeah, they're, yeah. Off the, they're off the chain with it man i mean yeah, good them. At that. you know what i mean i work with a company called agla italy they do um they do leather shoelaces and sh sh you know, sneak accessories i seen you the tims I mean? yeah it's real fire you know what i mean um, you know, and the brand, that brand is real hot, man. I mean, we're talking about, um, you know, high-end type of stuff. Yeah. Jay-Z, Jay -Z, Fat Joe. Sort of like right up my alley kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah see, yeah, you yeah. can't afford this. No, nah, what are you talking about? about. Yeah, you can't afford it. You know, they, they just did a deal with Savant. They're doing something with Adidas. It's really growing real crazy. You know what I mean? So, um, so I got, I got a couple guys. Sky's the limit. Yeah, yeah. Let me uh -huh. ask you this, man. Did a lot of this stuff springboard off of the stuff you've done in the past? Or was this like a total reinvention? Well, well, how, well no, it's not a reinvention at all. What okay. happened was when I, after I left television, I worked with a company called Passar Brothers. They're like one of the biggest marketing firms in New York City at the time. They did okay. a lot of stuff for Shearson and Somerset. For those who don't know who Shearson and Somerset is, it's a company that actually housed, um, you know, uh, alcohol called um, Tangare. Oh, okay. Yeah, we've heard of that. Never heard of that. Tangare, and, and they did a, a huge events with Tangare, and I worked. I learned the whole game, the whole marketing game from them. You know, and I already knew the music game because I had been in it since I was 18 years old. So, so that's what you do. You market. So for, I for went to products? NYU. I, I went. You know. You know. I did the real thing. I went to college. I went and got my um, my marketing degree. I already had a degree in communications. Oh, you didn't I, go to community I, college. Yeah, you clap it up for that. No, you know no, I mean? no. Just to the community college, but <laughs> my man went to NYU. Yeah, no, that's I, why. That's why you hear the applause. Here. And I and I went and got my degree, and then you know I opened my own company. You know what I mean? So, they offered me a free ride, but I said, you know what? <laughs> I got. I'm, I'm flip the script. Well, that's well, what I'm. What was your talent, janitor? Uh, okay, no, I was go. a boiler. I was a boiler operator. Yeah, yeah. You should have seen her. <laughs> But you know what? To speak of like the marketing stuff, I feel like just like in music, there's a lack of artist development, there's a lack of A and R work, and all that kind of stuff. That whole right. what you provide is so necessary, even from like as a DJ, from my perspective. Right. There's no real party promoters anymore. There's no one that creates. People promote parties that are already happening. They act like they did something. Right, right. You know, it's like yo, that's we want to. Yeah, know, nobody want to put the legwork yeah, in. They no don't want to do the not, work. It's not about all that no more. It's now nah. it's about oh the quick fix. You know, they got it. It sticks to the wall. Right, oh, right. we made that happen. Nobody. Right. Like, let me tell you something. I got a story. Can I tell you a quick story? No. I had, a, yeah. I had an artist, right? I had an artist that I was working with. You know, no names. We won't say no names. Say them. And, uh, nah, it's no need. But, you know, and, and it happened a couple of times, so it's probably really no need to say that. But they, you know, you come to them, you tell them, so listen, we got, I got a plan for you. This is your plan, your whole marketing, your promotional plan, how you're going to put your shit together. Right. They wasn't trying to hear that shit. They was on some shit like, oh, I'm going to do one joint. Right. I'm going to put it on, I'm going to put it on IG. If it pop off, it pop off. If, if it don't, we're going to do another joint. Mm -hmm. So it, it taught me that, you know, the new the new vibe right now is not about 
doing it the old school way. It's about just doing that. You know what I mean? Which doesn't necessarily work for everybody. Right. You know Do I mean? you think there's a lane for boom bap music again? There's always a lane for boom bap music and, and real hip hop. You know, hip hop is it's just we need to on what it. level? Oh. Uh, you know, not, not on, mainstream. Not, I'm, I'm not gonna, on, I'm gonna tell you. Not mainstream. Not on get so high that I'm you a, can't open your jaw level. I'm gonna tell you what it is, man. You know, we, we you just, know, just motherfuckers, just, motherfuckers is too, too interested in the commercial bullshit, man. Oh, a round of applause. That gets. And I'm, I'm just keeping it real, okay. 100, man. Fuck it. You know. But, but you know what though? Like that's that gets dictated from. That's coming from somewhere else. That's not even people's actual choice. There's no tastemakers, is what I'm saying. Nah, man, nobody's interested in the real shit no more, nah. man. Like I, like I think I was talking to y'all earlier about all this, and you know, you guys, and you know, a, a, a credit to uh, Flip the Script because they they play since I've been here. Real talk, this is the first time I've been here. Applause to that shit, cause I'm coming back. Oh, yo, yeah, man, want you come through coming family, back. Man. Another one. <laughs> Thank you, studio audience. <laughs> okay. And real talk, they've been everything they played so far. A songs that I never even heard of these artists, man, and the songs are fire. Yeah, but I, but if y'all can hear me, understand to keep giving C the hot shit, man, because this this is fire right now. I'm yeah, feeling everything it, he's playing, music wise, lyrics. It was a video. Let me explain. This was on Yo MTV Raps back in the day. They introduced Tupac. He just had to come off the movie Juice. Young Tupac walks into there. And T Money just disrespects him. That was nice. like, who this was kid? Bishop. I don't know this dude. This is my house. Blah blah blah. And at one point. T Money doesn't mush him. He actually forearm mushes him. Oh, very effective. So we're gonna call it a fush. <laughs> <laughs> he, fu- he fushed him. Nah, nah, we're real talk. Nah, it was nah, a four it mush. Was all, it was all set up, man. We, we were joking around. You sure? Yeah, positively, man. Tupac was my G, man. Was my how, how long did you know him? Like before that happened? Oh yeah, yeah. Really? We knew, yeah, we knew him before. Man. But oh, okay. after after yeah. Juice, that wasn't Tupac no more. That was Bishop. No, it doesn't matter. I was cool. Yeah. Yeah. We were cool. Killer. He's a killer. So you knew cool. him. Like, you knew him like Digital Underground. Yeah, days, we was right? cool. Yeah, we was cool regardless. I mean, we go back. You know what I mean? Yeah. So Pac was like Pac was a real. He was with catch, it. Very smart catch. So it was all an act. Every, nah, that was all Yo, you were pretty good on that. You yeah, had we, me fooled. We did a good job. Yeah. And so did Pac, by the way. He was definitely and smart. And so did Todd One, who was in the scene. Todd One was in the scene. Yeah, and then who comes in? Omar Epps try to hold it down, and then all of a sudden, he suddenly gets uh, you know his memory back real quick. Oh, yeah, he remembers like, about yeah. the movie. <laughs> and you got to see the video. Go to YouTube oh, sure. if you want to see cool. this. Yeah, MTV cool. Raps, Team Money, Tupac, Visit. Yeah, nice. man. It was fun. But that's, that's what's up. All right. So, yeah, man, we here. So don't front on us, man. We're doing it big right here tonight. So you know it. Flip the script radio in the place. T-Money in the building. Yo, Woo! T-Money's about to take Dave Rock job if he don't show up. No, that's yeah. all right. Shout out to Dave, man. He's I can't Dave, do that to him. Dave Yo, we got, wrong. We have an excellent 401k here. I don't know if you're uh, <laughs> We'll have a... BB's also our by, financial advisor. Okay, by four, Are you interested uh, in... By 401k, he Tacos, means burritos, anything along those lines? Okay, we got... We'll do it. <laughs> 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 we got it, baby. A dollar in a racist jar. A lot of things going on in here. Flip the script radio. We in here doing it big, man. Word I'm up. telling you. I'm telling you right now. It's not a game. It's not a game. It is not a it's game. It's not a game. AT Money. Man. We played a lot of joints tonight so far. Have you ever heard of any of these cats? No, no. That's what the crazy part is. I don't hear none of these cats. And they, everything is so fun. Yo, I am not bugging right now. It's not the Tito talking. It's real, it's real shit. Yeah, uh, like, everybody Tito. is, everybody is fire. So T Money, let's let's get into this whole MTV rap thing, man. How all this right. all started. All so right. you had you had Fat Five Freddy who started it, right? Well, Fat uh, Five he was Freddy doing the was weekends, the, right? Fat Five Freddy was the first host of your own TV raps. Peace out to the fabulous one, uh, the graffiti artist, the legendary Fat Five Freddy. Yes, he was the first guy to do your own TV raps. He was the first host. He did he did the weekends. He didn't want to stay in the studio. He wanted to go to, out to the public, out, out to the people, you know, because that was his vibe. He didn't want to be stuck in the studio, so. And he's got great hats, right? Yeah, he has great hats, great fedoras <laughs> for himself. Uh, I, just saw, I just saw him somewhere. I think he was in Italy somewhere oh. on a horse. <laughs> with a fedora. <laughs> with his fedora on. With his, <laughs> That's a lot shit, of hats. That shit was crazy. <laughs> fedora. And after that, they, um, they decided to do a daily show, which put us in the studio, you know, Ed and Dre came out and did their thing and then they brought me on after the fact you know what i mean that's something that your own tv raps did too people that's they at one time as you guys well know because you guys been in the game for a minute you know back in the day in the 90s everybody was doing their thing you know you had you had luke in miami you had the west coast doing their thing right you know you had new york rappers doing their thing you know philly had a sound atlanta had a sound detroit even had a small buzz chicago had a sound 
But, you know, Chicago didn't know really New York's culture and New York's vibe. No one knew what the West Coast was doing unless you were on the West or Coast. Or you had family out there or something. Yo, or, yeah. and nobody knew, but your own TV rats put all that together. You know, you can go home in the afternoon after school, click that on, and you can understand why my man is driving a, a low rider and he, you know, he got on chuckers, you know, instead, right. of, he, instead of wearing Adidas. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so it's like you unified so, the culture, man. Yeah, you know no question. But recently we had a reunion. Oh, yeah, the reunion show was off the hook. How was that? June 1st of this year, the reunion show took place at Barclays Was Center. that 30th? The 30th, 30th. Yeah, the 30th anniversary, yeah. Okay. Yeah, well, one and, of our uh, members was there. Uh, yeah. Who? Dave Rock was there. Yeah. Oh, Dave Rock was yeah. there that Dave day? Oh, okay. Yeah, it was 18,000 plus. Um, we, did, we did phenomenal with the uh, MTV live stream. We had over... Uh, 800,000 views on the live stream of MTV oh, wow, live stream. Um, and, and everybody came out to support, man. It was just um, a phenomenal night. Great hip-hop was happening. Um, classic hip-hop was happening. No violence. You know, I, I, even, I even smelled a little little skunk in the air, too. You know, what? You know, how was the vibe between you guys and Video Music Box? That was your rival back uh, then. No, we That's never, family, though. Well, we never took it. Ralph is people's. Baby. Yeah. Ralph, Ralph. Let me tell you something. I was at his 35th. Yeah. You know what I mean? I've been there. Almost everything Ralph did, this, you know, this year um, to support, you know, his legacy because you know Ralph inspired us. There was no ever a competition. Right, right. right. Plus, the Ralph, shows were so different too. You know, you know and, what I mean? And, and Ralph, and truth be told, Ralph had an opportunity to be on the network, and he chose not to do it because he wanted to stay true to what he was doing. Oh, we had to Ralph McDonald. We had Ralph on the show. And probably was, my favorite guest. It was probably 90% talk because we just wanted to hear him Yeah, we learned so <laughs> much from that dude. Yeah, man. Ralph, is, Ralph is official yeah. tissue, man. It's not it's a question. Historical. No that's, my, that's my guy right there. And so. we fed the hell out of him, too. Oh, yeah, no doubt. <laughs> Yo, let me tell you something. You get interviewed on this show, you get fed. No, <laughs> definitely. Yes, sir. The only oh, person we didn't feed was DJ Clips, and we did that on purpose. Oh, wow. Uh, you shout out to Eclipse. That was the one time he was like, and the one time I come, there's no food. Yeah, we didn't even give him water. And poor the, funny guy. Thing, the funny thing is that I probably have known him the longest out of anyone that's ever been on. So. That was an accident. Shout Mr. out to Eclipse. That Check was an out. accident. Rap is out of control, man. The show was awesome. So, so I mean, yeah, Ralph was never a, a rival. We never considered him a rival because it wasn't the same thing. Ralph serviced the inner city, right. New York City. You know what I mean? He had he had his own niche. You understand? So yeah. there was no rivalry involved. So you know what? What, I mean? what year did you come along? Like, and, and it was a Dre. He was like, "Wait a minute, my boy. You know, we're gonna put him on." Well, no. How did, that, how did that go down? You know, you, you were, um, me and Dre were in a group called Original. Concept. Yeah, yeah, exactly. No uh, doubt. We were one of the five um, first five groups that were signed to Def Jam at the time. We went on the road with the Beastie Boys, um, you know, and and all the early Def Jam. We were on the Raising Hell tour. We were out. Wicked. I mean, you know, I was I was always a music industry cat. You know, with DJ Dre was DJing, and um, what happened was MTV wanted us to do a pilot episode because um, they were interested in putting, um, you know, doing a Daily Show. So we we did some kind of crazy video. I don't know what we were trying to put together in a barber shop, you know. And then Dre, they gave Dre an audition because they wanted to team Dre up with Ed. You know, I was still around. I was like, "Yo, come on, man!" You know, I was like, "I was like, you know, who, who was cool with Dre me, more? Me, you, me? Then, okay." I grew up with Dre. Me okay. and Dre grew up in the same hood. We're from the Long Island. Oh, Westbury, Long Island in the building. You know, peace out to the hood, Newcastle in the building. Yes, sir. Um, we grew up in the same hood. Me and Dre. I know Dre since fifth grade. So it was like, and we were in a group called Original Concept. We DJ all our lives as a concept. You know what I mean? So. And we did a, a radio station called WBAU back in the day, which is like historic. I see you got you got something on the arm there, right? Yeah, because so. that's that's real right there. I'm about to say that that's dedication, right? I'm gonna there. tell you who came. I'm gonna tell you who came out of that radio station. You ready? That was yeah. the uh, LL Cool J, Run DMC, Lisa and New School, which included Buster Rhymes, Woo. Public Enemy, Bill Stephanie, T Money, and Dr. Dre. Woo. Um, a lot of people came out of that radio station. That radio station was before, you know, you could do internet radio. It was all college stations. That was um, out of Delphi, right? At Delphi University. It was a I, legendary station. I thought you were going to mention people that went on to do things. That you, <laughs> you're talking about these guys. Oh, right? yeah, I don't know these guys. <laughs> we, we weren't successful whatsoever. Shout out to them. Though. Ed Lover, Dr. Dre did the show. And it, it, it was about less than a year that I got, after that I got on it. Because they needed somebody... To read the mail, that's how I actually broke I it. Told you, man. I told the you that. mailman. Yeah, yeah. And they used to call me the mailman. The mailman man. concept. It was, it, it was funny because, you know, we, we did a, a bit out of it. And then after that, I started doing characters. I came out one day with the, you know, because Michael Jackson at that time had issues with MTV. It was, oh, it was crazy. That was hair caught on fire? Or no, that was earlier. No, that was, that was Pepsi. the Pepsi that commercial. Was, that was, oh, that's that was right, Pepsi. Right, right, right. But, yeah, but, but he had issues with MTV initially just before we got on because they, were, they weren't playing pe videos of anybody of color. 
They weren't playing live videos. They, they just wasn't feeling that. Is he qualified for that bum, category? Bum, bum, I don't know. But Mike is like Paige. <laughs> well, well, he supported it. So Mike, he's, 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 Mike was Paige. He's like, this thing, I'm Latino. I know black. <laughs> Mike was like Mike was like cardboard color. <laughs> but anyway, so he supported the issue. He supported the blackness, you know, regardless of whether he was acting black enough. Yeah, he was black enough. But what am I saying? But what I'm saying is. They were scared. MTV was scared at the time. They was like, well, if Michael Jackson takes all the videos off and we're new at the game, that's a problem. So they said, okay, we got to acquiesce and, you know, start playing. So I did. I said, okay, Mike right now doesn't look too black. So I'm going <laughs> to come out and do the real Michael Jackson. You know oh, what I mean? Shit, the Joe you know, Jackson. I'm, now I'm dark skin. I had an afro, the fake fro. I had the tight pants on. <laughs> Yo, I had it all, and, I, and it was so funny. That day, it was crazy. <laughs> Nobody knew I was going to do that except for the girl in wardrobe. So I came out on the set, and everybody bawled, laughed, laughing. laughing. <laughs> you had to say I had a coat on, and it had the real Michael Jackson I think written I, on a magic marker on you, the back I, of my joint. I vaguely remember you, that. You, you so, so, you always, so you always brought the funny, uh, everything you did. I, I made the show more of a variety program. Okay. Instead of it being just you know a video show, we let the videos. That, and Ed joined the party too. He started doing. Yo, I remember one day we he did um, what's the big cartoon character, the purple character? The, Barney. The, Barney. He did Barney, but Barney was gangster. Had to had the rope chain. Oh, I remember that. Yeah, 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 I remember yeah. that. Yo, yo, that was crazy. It came out like we all Barney. He's from the hood, Barney. So how yeah. long did it take before you guys noticed that you guys had something? Well, that it was serious. Somebody that the asked, numbers came in. Somebody asked me that question the other day because you don't, you do it and you enjoy it. And you don't think about like who how, who was impacting. I, I think someone came in from MTV from the from the office one day and said, um, "We're airing we're airing your MTV raps in Europe. I mean, not in Europe, in Japan." Okay. I said, "Huh? We made it. We're in Japan." <laughs> he said, "Yeah, it's, it's airing right now." I said, "Wow, that's 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 when you knew." You know that we were we were everywhere because we already knew we were in Europe. We already knew we were a different. And, and of course, the feedback in Japan was incredible. I'm sure, unbelievable. Right? People couldn't get enough of it, right? Japan, Japanese. So I, I so so let me tell you. I'm gonna get into the story. I didn't tell you, right? So my birthday party again. KRS One. Now my birthday party was packed. PM Dawn. PM Dawn. It was at this place called uh, G. Well, I forgot. My memory's going. 92. It was 92. The PM Dawn spot. But it was in, it was in the club in the city. So check it. Home base. So it was packed, man. And the crazy thing was, early on, it wasn't packed. It was like lukewarm. MTV was there filming. So who tells MTV to leave? You can KRS go, One. No, me, like a dummy. I tell them to leave. So they they left just before. Why did you tell them that? Did you know what was about to go down? No, I didn't, I didn't know shit. And so then when I got back up on the stage, I turned around and KRS One was here with a red hoodie on in the corner on some shit like. Oh. Yeah, we about to, Dolo, we about to fuck somebody up and shit. So, <laughs> so I said, "What's up?" Was, was cracking. He, he explained to me. I said, "Okay, you know, this is hip hop. Do what you do. You know what I mean?" So, next thing I know, gangster. Next thing I know, I'm you know I'm on stage. Next thing I know, to be I'm doing is performing. You hear set on the drift, <laughs> and then boom, boom, bah, <laughs> boom. They're throwing girls off the stage. They're throwing him off the stage. But they threw him off the stage. My word. It looked like the Red Sea party. <laughs> well, people didn't want to get killed. Yo, yo, the place was so packed, and everybody would move the fuck out the way. Like, wait, wait, wait. Oh, wait a minute. Wait, but KRS launched them? They didn't think it was crowd surfing? How the hell did he pick them up? It was, he launched them? It was KRS was there. Yo, Kid Capri was standing next to me. He launched them like that, though? Yo, it was, it was ugly. <laughs> KRS did it solo? I don't, know, I, I don't know how it happened. It, it, it happened, though. All I know, the next thing I know, I'm standing there, and then KRS is telling Kenny Parker, Kenny, Kenny Parker dropped that. Then he dropped. Oh. Dan, Dan. Dan, hold on, hold on, hold on. Time Dan. out. Hold up. That would mean not only did he throw PM Dawn off the stage, but he got rid of the DJ too. Oh yeah, he got rid of all. Oh, of course. The they girls, the right. girls that dance with them, everybody. Yeah, but the stage. DJ in order Yo, for listen. him, in order for him to throw on the joint, he did a cut. He did a cut. The DJ West. had to get tossed. Do you remember too? The, the DJ? What was wow. that? Well, not, See, not, actually, the DJ was on the stage. He wasn't up in the booth. No, the DJ, because this DJ was up in the booth. Right. Oh, he got lucky. That was Clark Kent was in the booth. Oh, all right. Shout out but to he, Clark. And he, let, and he let Kenny get on. Oh, okay. Oh, of course. Okay, yeah. respect. Yeah, you uh, respect. Yeah, you got, you got, Kenny, shout oh, out to Kenny Clark Kenny, Kenny told, I guess he told Clark, it's about to go down. Oh, what Bronx, do you say at this the Bronx point? Bronx is in the building. Okay, so, BDP's in the building. And, and Brooklyn, because, um, um, you what, know, what Clark Clark's from the Brooklyn. He's what do you say at that point? The PM Dawn was the, the song was a big song at that point. Right, right. Like they had already a, was it or were they like kind of just? No, no, it was, 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 like was big. It was a big song. Yeah, I remember at that time so, it was bigger. Right. Yo, let me tell you something. Then when they dropped the joint, right? Crowd this, was nuts. This, yo, let me tell you something. This right, it had. I, I wish to this day it was on film, but I'm, I'm, I can be as graphic as possible. 
the crowd, when the Karis one said, jump, 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 jump. Boom, dun, 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 dun. <laughs> T Money is down with us. Oh. Kid Capri Ooh. is down with the us. The first name. The ultimate real talk, time. The fucking crowd went like. <laughs> oh, shit. The whole crowd, the whole building shook. That's brought it back. He brought it back with that. I was like, what in the world? I said, fuck it. I'm down with us. Yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> let me take it back a little further. You see the writing on the wall, basically, but is what I'm saying. But people, let me take it back a little further. When me and Dre. Started DJing, um, we, uh, when we met, um, Dr. Dre met Chuck D and, and um, Bill Stephanie, the president of Def Jam at one time, at um, Adelphi University in a class in 83. Okay. So when we started going to the college, you know, that we started doing college parties as DJs, we, you know, we thought we was hot shit. You know? <laughs> but at the time... You had, to do the, you had to do the college scene, though. Yeah, but a lot, of, a lot of fraternities and all these other organizations never wanted us to play rap music. Mm-hmm. They didn't want us to. They, they didn't even want rap music played at no, their really? parties, which was crazy. Which was crazy as hell. So you know, it, and, and we knew the surge was coming, but you know, you you could never truly predict, you know, where this music was going to go. Right. But you know, it was going to be something yeah. phenomenal. Right. You know what I mean? Because everybody kept trying to hold us down. You yeah, know what I mean? It, it wasn't. You know, it was it wasn't official. Yo, what up, everybody? Shout out to the chat room. Everybody that's still in there. We appreciate the love. No I doubt. don't know. I can't hear anything under this dope ass hat that I'm wearing. Oh. Matt's Yo, hold on. I got a nice hat too. Hold on. Everything is blocked out by the end of dope T450. 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 Nifty. T450. 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 We're doing it well. Doing it and doing it and doing it well.